Yep. Oh man, that is so much fun. I absolutely love watching bobbers go down. Flip him up in here. He, he wanted that. Had a bad crappie. Thick. Not overly long, but... Let's see if we can get a couple more. Obviously, like anything in fishing, technology's starting to escalate and we have the fortunate ability to use it and have it. And today we're running 360, but not the traditional 360 on your cable drive trolling motor. So they've come up now with a, a bracket just like this that you're able to run 360 with your standard electric steer trolling motor like this Tarova. So we've, we're pretty sure we've gotten onto a school of fish now and pretty much this whole area is in that 20 to 23 feet. So what I'm gonna do with my bobber stop is, you know, I wanna stay up above those fish significantly. If I have to drop lower, I will, but uh, just to start out before I start fishing them, I'm gonna put my bobber stop in that 18 foot range. So I'm significantly above them, but what that's gonna do is, is those active fish out of that school are gonna be, I'm targeting those essentially. Those are the, gonna be the first ones that I catch out of that school. So to do that, you know, for me, what I do is I roughly, no, and it's gonna be a little more challenging in the wind here, but I know my wingspan is 16 feet, or six feet. Six feet, like three inches to be exact, but. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my bobber stop, and I'm just gonna give it three, three uh, wingspans here, two, Three. And now I know that my bait's getting down roughly 18 feet. And as I'm fishing here, I can adjust. And since we're in the wind, you know, I'm spot locked, but instead of having that school directly in front of me, it just makes it a le little easier with the, with the bobbers where you're not casting straight into the wind. So I have us paralleling the school so I can cast a little into the wind and have that bobber float down back through. And I'm actually, as much as I can, I wanna watch my bobber stop. So when it gets to that, when it actually gets to the bobber, just like right there, now I know I'm fishing in the strike zone. So that's what that tungsten weight helps with, especially in the wind like this, is getting that line and that bobber stop to the bobber as fast as possible. So there's that school of fish and there is, it is some form of brush pile or, or, or something in there out here in this basin. It's a featureless basin out here, but in there, they're relating to this brush and we're just paralleled to it. In order to position myself so I can make this cast accurately every time, I've got a spot, I mean, the wind's pumping today, so I've got a spot locked here. I mean, this is just like a big clock, so that's my cast right there. Come back, and it's just a little flip. And then I know that with this wind, that, bot, that bait's gonna float right through that school of fish. In the wind like this, you can see there's a huge bow in my line. And I try and actually keep that up off the water. because <clears throat> the more that bow in my line gets caught in those waves, uh, the, the faster it's pulling that bait through and the more effect it's having on that bait down below. So that's where that longer rod helps because I can keep my rod tip up and I'm able to keep that line, even, even as that bait's falling and that line's getting pulled through the bobber, I try and keep that line up off of the water as much as possible. It, yes, it is getting caught in the wind, so it's still kind of held up, but I feel like the water creates more drag than the wind does, if that makes sense. Oh, there it was. Sometimes, especially with crappies, it's just, they can be light bites, so especially in this wind. Ooh, that's not a bad one. Boy, these fish are just thick. But especially in this wind, like 
when your bobber's going up and down waves like that, sometimes you just kind of got to, you got to look at how your, how your bobber is floating in the water. So when, when these waves are coming through, it's not always going under is what I'm seeing now. But, and when it does, generally that means there's a fish on it. So that fish may have, may not pull that bobber down all the way initially, but if that wave comes through and that bobber stays down, there's a fish on it. So, I mean, as far as the slip bobber setup goes, I mean, it's pretty basic. And uh, there are just a few different things on how I, how I like to rig a slip bobber in general, especially with this tungsten weight. So uh, I'll just run you through real quick on how, how I set this up. So first, bobber stop. And when it comes to slip bobber fishing, you know, I actually do, you know, you can fish anything you want, right? But I personally get a little particular with my combo, my rod, my reel, my line. Um, when it comes to pan fishing, or even if I'm walleye fishing, like I, r I really like to run a mono. So that floating line just seems to, to help a little bit. I'll eat, run a six or eight pound. This happens to be a six pound today because we're chasing crappies. Um, and then a really long rod. So this is a seven six medium light. It's really long. And what that does for me is it, if you think about when your bobber's sitting there and it's vertical and you've made a long cast, what that long rod helps me do is it helps me get more vertical on that fish. So. If I have a short rod, I'm pulling a lot of slack line and I have to pull that bobber through the water when I go to set the hook. With a longer rod, it helps me, if you can visualize it with the bobber and you got your line. When I'm setting that hook, if I have a longer rod, I'm able to kind of pull that line up through the top of the bobber and I'm, I don't have as much drag from that bobber pulling through the water. So it allows me to get a better hook set, basically. And then along with, you know, the longer rod obviously allows you to cast a little bit further with that, you know, there, there's kind of a lot going on at the end of there. So as far as line management and everything, that longer rod helps you kind of make your pitch. Not, you know, it's not a bullet cast with the bobber. You're making your, your, your more of a flip pitch, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it would just helps a little bit with that. But so as far as the actual rig goes so i got my bobber stop on first here i prefer the the thread bobber stops opposed to you know maybe using a rubber one personally i just think they work a little better and then in your little packages of bobber stops you always get your beads i do i do like to run a bead you don't always have to in between your bobber stop and your bobber thread my bead on there we got bobber stop, bead, bobber. Bobber stop, bead, bobber, tungsten. I prefer a bullet weight. Obviously, anything really work, but I do prefer a sliding weight on there. I just, I don't know, throughout the years, I've just found that I feel like a sliding weight Helps with casting and everything and keeping everything compact. So I go bobber stop, bead, bobber, tungsten, then I go swivel. I just like, I like to use as small a swivel as possible just to kind of keep everything streamlined and I don't have a big hunk of metal down there. So there's the, the base of it. What I found with these is you don't, I don't like to cut the bobber stop, the, the extra tag end as tight as I possibly can because throughout the day you will want to re-tighten that bobber stop down. So I just like to leave just a little bit, just enough to where it's not going to cause too much issue going through your guides, but enough where you can get your fingers on it to uh, tighten it up throughout the day. that okay now 
take my leader length. You know, I like to start long. I'll cut it down as I feel the need, but somewhere between, you know, one, two foot leader. There, and then your jig, the business end. So using a little jig in a plastics today, the little VMC probe. And what's nice about using that tungsten weight is it doesn't really matter how small your actual jig or you know whether you're using a plain hook and a minnow or whatever it is, it doesn't really matter how small or light that is because that tungsten weight will get your bait down to where it needs to be. You know, and I like plastics, you know, that's a horizontal, it's gonna sit down there horizontally for the most part. So like something, you know, when I'm using kind of plastic, something with the tail that as that bobber's going up and down in the waves, it's gonna have some a little bit of action to it. So that's the setup, pretty basic, but pretty effective. So paying attention to how your your bobber is moving in the water when it, when there's when you don't have a bite is can be really key because sometimes with these crappie bites, see just ooh, with these crappie bites, even the slightest change in your bobber will indicate that uh, it got you got bit. See just right there. I mean it wasn't much but just as that as that bobber came up over that wave I just noticed it was a little different another nice thick one I mean they're not overly long today but if you look at their backs I mean that's a really thick fish so decent little crappie on the slip bobber and that little probe and that's what's nice especially in this cold weather it's, I mean, it's fall, it's cold, or geared up, but I really like using plastics. Just, I mean, live baits, fine, you catch fish on it and everything, but having to stick your hand in a minnow bucket and just, just dealing with it uh, prevents me from using it a lot of the times. I just prefer using plastics and you get over the right school of fish and it doesn't seem to matter. They eat it anyways. There we go. Again, that one just didn't even hardly, they're not coming up and that bobber's not just shooting straight down, but that one's not huge. But you just get it around these fish and they come up and slurp it as long as you're paying attention to that bobber. And uh, knowing what's going on. A lot of the times this time of year, you know, it jigs and plastics, that's pretty much what we use all, all winter long when we're targeting these same exact fish through the ice. So, I mean, it just makes sense that they're going to eat it now in the fall. And, and uh, you know, we, this, this particular probe is one that we really, we really like in the, in the winter as well, just its durability and fish just like it. On a day like today, you know, the wind's pumping, right? So it's not, uh, it is not the ideal day for bobber fishing crappies, but um, you know, it's something that I really enjoy and and we're out here making it happen. And obviously the fish are, fish are biting. So, you know, I think I've got my, my depth dialed in now, because as you can see, I'm just pretty much every pass now through these fish. Uh, I'm getting bit and you know along with you know with this setup having that tungsten weight on there in the wind like this not only does it help that bait get down there faster because obviously I'm using a tiny tiny jig so without that tungsten weight out here in 23 feet of water in this wind it's literally impossible to fish that so but along with that having that tungsten weight as I'm pitching back into the wind here it kind of it just it streamlines everything and gets everything out into the wind and allows me to to make that pitch so that's that's another reason why i like to use you know just a little bit bigger weight than you might think uh as your dropper weight if if you want to call it that obviously you know 
360 is really expediting the process for us. That's pretty much what it does. Because what I can do, you know, getting that depth dialed in on your on your bobber setup is is a pretty important part because you don't know, um, you know, you can go around side image and find these fish and go back and fish them, but you know, you might be below them or you might be above, way too far above them where they're not gonna, where they're not going to uh, come up and chase that bait, but what 360 allows, that's a little bit bigger one there. I'm a, uh, not real long again, but just look at that belly on them. I mean, they're definitely putting on the feed bag. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can actually see inside here worms. So that's what we're imitating. And I know I'm getting off track. I'll get back to the electronics here in a second. But so you can see what he's puking up there. And, and you know, that's why I'm using these small plastics. You know, there are times when bigger, bigger slab wraps or blade baits will get it done on these fish when they're targeting minnows. But what we found today is that they are keying in on those bugs or worms down there. And so that's why I've got this small plastic. I can get him, he was not coming unbuttoned. Right there. You know, it's a little messed up there, but that's why I've got this small plastic. Because they're they're targeting in on these, <clears throat> they're keying in on these worms and bugs and, and that's what they're eating. So, matching the hatch, small jig, elongated plastic like a worm, you know, not even a bug profile. But what I was saying before, got interrupted by that fish, with <clears throat> dialing in your depth. So it can be a process. And what, what the 360 allows me to do, you know, it, it just helps me do that faster because what I'm able to do is I know that every pass I'm going by the fish. So if I'm not getting bit, you know, it could be my bait. I might need to change colors or that sort of thing. But for the, for the most part, my first step is getting that depth dialed in. And I know that every cast, when I make this pitch, I'm coming back and I'm gonna be in the fish. And so I can make one, two passes. If I don't get bit, I'm changing my depth until I start getting bit like I'm doing now. So, you know, and then if you do that for a while, you go up, you go down, and you're still not getting bit, then maybe you need to change colors. Maybe you need to do a chartreuse or maybe a more natural color. But, um, you know, it, it's just dialing in that depth and having 360, knowing that I'm fishing in the fish every time, uh, really, really expedites the process. And I'm not saying you can't do it without it, but it just, helps me do it a lot quicker.